What's up, youth? So glad to be able to join you this Wednesday here in the building in our small groups. If you're watching this online, I want to invite you to come in person. We'd love to have you. You can find out more info in the link below. As we begin tonight, we're going to start things off right with a game. So, Hannah, why don't you explain what's going to happen? Yeah, we're going to play a game called Think in Sync. So, Nick is going to give us a word, and we're going to see if we can think of the same word that relates to the word that Nick shared. We're going to do a couple, and then we're actually going to give you guys the opportunity to play along with us. Wilbur. Miss Piggy. <laughs> Soda. Soda. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nike. Nike. Okay. Danica. Rhonda. Dang it. <sighs> Christmas. Christmas. Backpack. Backpack. Blazers. Blazers. What? Oh. Sweet. Great. I feel like we crushed it. Good work, Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a bunch for playing. Go ahead and have a seat. All right, you guys, we're playing a game called Mystery Box. Nick and I both took a trip to Goodwill and we both chose three items. We're going to take turns explaining the item to the other person. There's a curtain here so that the other person can't see it. And the other person, say I'm explaining my item, Nick is going to have to try to tell if I'm telling the truth or if I'm lying. And we're gonna do best two out of three. We both picked three items. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Luke, why don't you start us off? Um, go ahead and explain an item and I'll, I'll see if I think you're telling the truth or not. All right. All right, okay. here we've got a um, kitten urn for like cremating a kitten and putting your cat in here. And uh, it happens to be for a kitten named Hugo. And I <laughs> am not sure if it was used or not. It may have been. It says, I miss you. Uh, and I am a little ashamed that Goodwill would sell a kitten urn. Dude, here's the thing. If this is real, <laughs> shame on Goodwill. <laughs> um, you're telling it as if it's very true. Uh, dude, I'm gonna say truth, but I don't wanna agree with the fact that this might be real. Truth? Yeah. It is legitimately a kitten urn. No! Okay, here we go. We've got a turkey, potentially on Thanksgiving Day because of his attire. And it's a turkey holding an ax dressed up as if it's Thanksgiving Day. Maybe dressed up like a uh, pilgrim with sticks tied to him. And uh, yeah, a Thanksgiving turkey with, a, with an ax, like he's fattened for the slaughter. But the ironic thing is he's dressed up as if he's not a turkey. Well, part of me is wondering if, you're, if you have a white lie thrown in there. Mm. If there's like, it's a turkey, but he has a knife, not an ax. Mm. That's fair. And because I think that might be what's happening, I'm gonna say lie. Lie? Truth, dude. All right, bro. Here, I have a cookie jar. Okay. Not so different than my cat urn. <laughs> Hopefully people don't get those mixed up. <laughs> 
And it appears that on the cookie jar is a cookie eating a cookie. Hmm. So it's like a Chips Ahoy situation. It's got, it's white with like blue accent around the top. Who? He's telling it very similarly to the other one, but this one seems a little bit more confident. The other one, he was kind of explaining it like he was blown away by what he was explaining. This one, he's kind of like, it's super intentional about it. I'm gonna say false. You're not telling the truth about something. Oh, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Holy smokes. Dude, it is a cookie jar. <laughs> okay, so what we have here is an army man nutcracker that happens to be Pastor Dave. Well, we did go to Goodwill and then we were in the printing room. So, an army hey, man nutcracker. Army man nutcracker and he happens to have, who happens to be Pastor Dave, and he happens to have a, like a chain around his neck, like a military chain. Was it true until you added the chain? That's on you. <laughs> it was true until you added the chain. Okay. It is a nutcracker with Dave's face. Yeah. Without a chain. Without a chain is what you're yeah. saying? So you're saying I'm saying it's false? Sure. Dude. Chain, 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 chain. <laughs> Dude, yo, right. Pastor Dave. <laughs> That's what's up, dude. That's what's up.
I've heard it said that the only constant thing in life is change. It's one thing that we can bank on that change will always be a thing. Think about it. What were you like in middle school? My assumption or my guess is that things are so different. Things have changed drastically since then. Probably the way you look, probably the things that you enjoy doing, the things you like, maybe even your friend group has changed. Um, and maybe a lot of the people in and around your life have changed as, as you've kind of observed them go, um, as you've observed time go by. Maybe you know a girl who used to be like super shy in middle school and now she's like super outgoing and like running for class president and things like that. Or maybe you know someone who went from being a complete jerk, like that's kind of how you knew them in middle school, but actually they're like the nicest person that you've ever met. Um, maybe you yourself would admit that you're a drastically different person than you were a couple of years ago. Um, if I ask you if you've changed a lot, you would probably say, dude, obviously I've changed a lot because everyone changes. Um, congratulations, that's exactly what I was hoping that you would think um, because the point is that people change except for when they don't. Sometimes we think, man, change is inevitable. Everybody changes. Change is going to happen. But when we think of some bad characteristics of people, it's really easy for us to begin thinking they will never change. They will always be like that person. Maybe you thought this, my coach is a jerk and he will always be a jerk and there's nothing that will ever change that. Or maybe you think, dude, my sister is so clumsy and messy and that's just who she is. She will never change she's just going to be a disaster, you know? Or maybe you think my dad will never not have a bad temper. Like he will not change from that. Or that guy at school will never not be a bully. He will not change. Or that girl will never not be a stoner. Like that is the identity that she has and she will never change. When it comes to the things um, about other people that we don't like, it's easy for us to believe that, that they will not become a different person. But if we're all being honest, when we are stuck in, in rhythms of life like that, we feel the same way about us. We feel the same way about ourselves. When we are struggling with something, we think, man, will I ever be able to change from this? But think about it. Do you have something that you wish that you could change about yourself, but you don't feel like you can change it right now? I'm not talking about your height or your eye color. Um, I am talking about things like this. Maybe it's an addiction or a bad habit that you can't get rid of. It's something you know, or at least you, th you know that you should stop, but you just don't feel like you have the resource to do so. You don't feel like you could ever actually stop. Or maybe it's a situational thing, like you have people who really frustrate you in your life right now, and you eventually find yourself blowing up and losing your temper, and you go, man, will I always struggle with anger and blowing up? Or maybe it's anxiety for you, or maybe it's a label. Maybe there's something that you've done, a mistake that you carry, and you think, man, because I've made this decision, people will always say that I am blank. This is who I am. They put you in a box, and then you put yourself in a box, and you say, this is all I will ever be. I cannot change. Um, if you're anything like me, um, it's in these times where you're kind of tempted to give up, to try to change. You're kind of like, man this is who I am. You just kind of take on this identity and kind of settle for less than your potential. We all do this. And uh, by, the way, by the way, there's a quick and easy way to know you're giving up. And it's when you start saying things like this. It is what it is. Um, that's just who I am. I'm only human. And we start not dreaming. We stop dreaming the best for what God might have for us. And that leads us right back to this dude, Zacchaeus, that we've been talking about for the last month or so. Um, he was a bad guy, had a bad reputation. Despite all that he had done, Jesus shocked the crowd by, by directing his attention towards this guy that nobody else liked. In verse uh, chapter 19, verse 7, it says, All the people saw this. They saw that Jesus had went towards his direction, and they muttered, He is gone to be the guest of a sinner. So think of it this way. Think of like this huge celebrity maybe like Justin Bieber or something like that. And um, somebody that you're like, oh, they, if they ever came to my school, people would flip out. But then think about the person that might be the most despised in your school, where it's like this kid is just known as being a bully. Like most people, they just have a reputation of just not being liked because of who they are or what they're all about. Now think of this celebrity pinpointing that kid 
and giving all of his time and attention to that person. Wouldn't that drive you nuts? Wouldn't you be like, oh, if you only knew who this person was, you would not be giving them attention. Like there's so many better people around here. But that's kind of what was happening in the crowd. Now imagine being Zacchaeus. You're a tax collector who cheats people out of their money. Nobody likes you. And there's a man that people call the Messiah, the great teacher. He's like this famous guy that everybody wants to be around. Um, a massive crowd is gathered just to get a glimpse of him, and he chooses you. And, and you don't expect this. You, you actually assume that he, like this famous person would want nothing to do with you. And here's the thing. He doesn't yell at you. He, he doesn't tell you that you need to change your ways. He, he knows who you are. He knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. But more than that, he sees who you could be. He sees beyond the rut that you've been stuck in. And look at how Zacchaeus responds. It says in verse 8, But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay four times the amount. Dang, it's awesome that Zacchaeus took this step to repay people. But that's really cool, but that's not the point. The point is that this outward step was really just a reflection of what was art, what was taking place in his heart. Like something happened to Zacchaeus in the moment that Jesus spoke to him. That's when it became personal for him. Jesus saw who Zacchaeus could be, and it helped imagine a different future for him. So when, when somebody believes that you can be different than you are right now, it changes things, right? When somebody sees potential in you and they start encouraging you like, I know you're this person, even if you don't feel like it, so it does something, it motivates something within you. When someone sees your potential and not just your mistakes, it helps you to believe that change is actually possible. And that's what Jesus did for Zacchaeus. And he sees potential in you as well. Think about it, Jesus was God, he, he, he walked the earth to give people a picture of what God was like. And, and Jesus showed up in his interactions with Jesus that we don't, showing that we don't have to change in order to be okay with God. Like no matter what we struggle with, he sees who we can become. Think of it this way. It's personal because Jesus sees your potential. And look at what happens next. Verses 9 and 10. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. I love that line. Today salvation has come to this house. That day radical change came to Zacchaeus' life. Why? Because Jesus walked right up to him and treated him like he had potential to be something different than he had been up to this point. That's what Jesus does. He pursues people and he offers his help and his strength strength, so that they can grow into the best version that Jesus has in mind for them. And because of Jesus, anybody can radically change. Do you believe that? Do you believe that because of Jesus, you could change? Do you believe that because of Jesus, some of the people that you could never imagine in a million years would change? Do you believe that they could change as well? I love what Paul says. He says this way, in Coloss uh, Corinthians 5.17, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. That is what Jesus does. A new creation is actually found in Christ. In other words, change happens through the work of Jesus in him alone. So what does this mean for us, practically speaking? I'm going to give you two ways that we can respond to this. And one, shift the way that you view yourself. What if you started to look at Jesus, look at your life, and started viewing the potential that Jesus saw in you and started living from that place? What if you started shifting like, okay, this is the rut that I feel like I'm in. This is the thing that I feel like I can't change. What does Jesus have to say about this? What would Jesus, um, if he called me out of the tree, so to speak, and I had to respond, what would he see in me? What would he draw out of me? And then the second thing is shift the way that you see other people. I think when you see that people could actually change, it views the way that you interact with them. Think about it. Like there's a guy, there's a bully at the school and you're just like, he's never going to change. Your conversation with him is probably going to be really short. It's going to be like, ah, oh, you'll never change. Um, you're just a bully. So I'm going to make this conversation short. But if you're like, man, if Jesus got a hold of this person's life, imagine what kind of influence he could have. If he has this kind of influence for bad, imagine what kind of influence for good he could have. So that changes the way you begin to talk with him, right? 
What if you shifted the way that you view people and actually started to believe that people could change if Jesus just got a hold of their heart, just like Jesus got a hold of Zacchaeus' heart? So it's easy to just go through life assuming that you can't change and nobody else can change, but that simply isn't true. And we've seen that in this story. Zacchaeus became a different person. And when Jesus treated him differently, he changed into a, the, the, the person and we change into the people that are almost hardly recognizable. Um, so often I go back to my hometown and people barely even recognize. They think of, man, I remember you in high school. You're totally different than the way that you once were. And let me just say that that's possible for all of us as we submit and commit our lives to Jesus. Just know that making a change is so much more likely to happen when you have support in your life and you have people encouraging you. So don't walk this journey alone. Consider sharing what you would like to change in your life in your small group tonight. And then we can be on mission to just kind of help you out and start seeing the best in you, seeing the potential that you have. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and pray for you. And we're going to go ahead and discuss the topic um, and how it relates to our own lives, the things that we want to change the things that we don't feel like could ever change, and then we're going to start speaking potential into one another. So let me pray. God, thank you so much for this story, for Zacchaeus, um, for the fact that you targeted him, and not just the people that are following all the rules, but people who are struggling, and you saw past those things, and you actually breathed life and new perspective into him. God, I pray that you would do that for these students, these leaders, for myself today in this moment. Pray that the students today would leave this church building, or they would um, interact with you online, however they're doing this today. I just ask that you would move in their hearts and you'd give them a vision of who you've created them to be, and they wouldn't settle for just being stuck um, in this place where they cannot change. We know that you have the power to pull the best out of us. Pray that you would do that in the students' lives today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <laughs>